Welcome back. Yes, it was mandible. Now, David, last night um, it was fascinating. You were talking about Hinglish, that really interesting blend right. of language within India. But what about when you step outside a country and, uh, and then the language looks back? <laughs> it's a great question because I love this word and this syndrome within language. Um, for example, we say Rome, we say Florence, and both these cities are in Italy. But the Italians themselves, they say Roma, Firenze, Italia. Because that is how the natives identify their own place names, but not how the outsiders identify those names. And it's called an exonym. E-X-O-N-Y-M. Great word. And nim, we should know, is a name, as in synonym or antonym. Exo, outside. So it literally is an outside name. And uh, India, getting back to the Hinglish uh, cradle, is a very good example of that. Because, uh, you know, what used to be Bombay, Madras, Calcutta, is suddenly Mumbai, Chennai and Kolkata. However, those phrases are still preserved because we have Bombay bloomers still, we have Madras curry or Madras linen, and we also have the uh, Calcutta auction, which is uh, where you sort of purchase uh, a competitor before the event, a racehorse or a billy cart, actually. I was at a billy cart Calcutta once um, because that first event, the Calcutta auction, happened in... Calcutta or Kolkata? You choose. <laughs> well, it's nice to have the choice sometimes, but um, great comparisons. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, David. As we head for some more letters, and uh, this time, Daniel, your choice. Yes, can I have a vowel, please? Thank you. Let's start with you. And another vowel. I. And one more vowel, please. O. Can I have a consonant? D. And another consonant? N. And another consonant? K. Another consonant, please? F. A vowel, please? A. And one more vowel. And lastly, E. Here's our 30 seconds. How many, Daniel? I've got five. Emily? A six, I think. Let's start with the five, Daniel. Faked. And Emily? Funked. <laughs> oh, OK. Well, it might be a little bit of funky movement. Is it in the dictionary, though, David? <laughs> How groovy was that? Uh, <laughs> yes. Actually, funk is down here to shrink or quail. Uh, may describe a, a horse that is uh, spooked by something. It is funked. Uh, that is a good six. However, the chocoholic may well have found fondue, which is another six there. <laughs> Very nice indeed. Tasty too, but uh, a good six points for Emily. We're enjoying the letters, so let's keep going. Emily, you again. Uh, can I start with a consonant, please, Lily? Thank you. S. Another, please. D. And another. M. Uh, a vowel now, please. I. Another vowel. E. A consonant, please. P. A consonant. D. A vowel, please. A. And a consonant, please. And last letter, T. Thanks, Lily. Here we go. Well, you weren't funked by this one. How did <laughs> no. you go, Emily? Uh, seven, Richard. Seven. What about you, Daniel? I've got seven also. Great stuff. Let's start with yours. Paddies. And yours, Emily? Stamped. Sound like good sevens, David. Well done. Good play, both of you. Uh, excellent sevens. Paddies, of course, being either the rice fields or even a, a tantrum or a temper. And uh, stamped is good too. What did you find? 
Well, stamps could be, if you collect stamps, that could be a pastime, which is another seven. But uh, there is actually a word that could relate to stamps, and it's misdated. M-I-S-D-A-T-E-D. -E I saw that miss prefix and saw what was left. Misdated. Good stuff. Well done. And great work from Emily and Daniel. Seven points each. More numbers in just a moment, but, um, Daniel, just before you choose, I gather that there was actually a connection between you and Emily because your father taught you, Emily, didn't he? Uh, what, what did he teach you? Uh, language and identity, a subject I took at, at university while studying linguistics. So is this just sheer coincidence that, uh, that you happen to, to get together and find this connection? It yep. is. <laughs> that is a lovely bit of coincidence. But we need to deal with the numbers now. So, uh, Daniel, what's your choice? I'll go for what's been called the classroom. Five small and one large, please. Oh, thanks, Daniel. I like that one. That's one large and five small. And starting with the smalls, two, four, five, seven, ten, and the large number is 25. The target to reach is 319. Thanks, Lily. Let's head there. How did you go in the classroom, Daniel? I got 316. Three off. Good going. Emily? I got the same total. 316 for yes. you too. Well, Daniel, take us through your approach first, please. So I've got 10 plus 2, which is 12. 10 plus 2 is 12. Times 25. By the 25 is 300. Plus 7 plus 5 plus 4. Plus 7 plus 5 plus 4 is 316. So, well done, Daniel. Emily, did you do it the same way? Exactly the same way. <laughs> Would you just uh, verify that you've taken the same approach? So, we've got to 316, Lily. Yeah. How did you go? Um, I managed to get there. I'll talk you through it. Um, now, 25 plus 7 is 32. By the 10 is 320. And we're one away. So, 5 minus 4 is 1. Take that away is 319. <laughs> Great method. Nice result. Well done, Lily. So, three away, and Emily and Daniel both score seven points each. Daniel on 26, Emily on 39. As we head for our next break and your next word mix, it is more polo. And the clue this time, your treasures go straight here. Back in a while.